Well, I had long suspected there might be some other entities washing around in the ancient texts. Um, partly through at the time I had had in the past to look at translation issues, partly through the work of ministry, because in 33 years in ministry, you will come across some paranormal situations that you have to interpret and you have to begin confronting that there are a few more entities washing around in the cosmos than we generally talk about. His hungry and thirsty human beings were suffering in the desert. They'd been on emergency rations for goodness knows how long. They were having problems because of lack of access to safe drinking water. What does Yahweh do? He gives them a stone and Moses has to get water from the stone. When they say, we can't live on this emergency ration forever, can we have some proper food, please? Yahweh punishes them by sending not food, but snakes. That's what Jesus is referring to. That's how Yahweh responds to hungry people. What kind of father does that? Jesus says, you evil lot, you know how to look after your children. You wouldn't do that to your children. What kind of father would? In that moment, you can't equate Yahweh with the God that Jesus was revealing and relating to and calling father. So you get to the Ten Commandments and it's very clear there are other powerful ones out there, but you are not to talk about them, you're not to serve them, you're not to work for them, don't even depict them. Uh, forget they're there, serve this one, serve Yahweh only. So right then and there you realize Yahweh fits into this um, this uh, population of powerful beings he's one of them and it makes sense now when you get to the story of Yahweh being very jealous of the powerful one of Ekron when uh, some of his human beings go off to consult him and he says is there not a powerful one here you could consult that you go to the powerful one of Ekron and there's this peer-to-peer -peer competition going on suddenly it makes sense Yahweh is one of the Elohim in your third book, you actually open um, the book with uh, a, a quick synopsis of a regression that you did with Barbara Lamb, who is a very uh, well-known ET regressionist. And what did you learn in that process? And how have you come to understand your own contact experiences? Sure. Well, I had a number of experiences when I was 20 years old that I always puzzled over and I knew I didn't have a handle on them. I didn't understand what had happened. To my mind, they either had to be experiences of God or the devil, <clears throat> angels or demons, or human, animal, vegetable, mineral. I had no other boxes for the universe to fit right. into, if you can imagine that. And, um, but I knew it didn't quite fit. So I had a scary experience of five entities showing up in my apartment just outside Bath and I didn't know what I was looking at. I, I could see clearly enough to see that there were five of them. I could see clearly enough to see they were about the size of a year six uh, but they were somehow translucent. Um, I knew they weren't human and I was scared uh, and then I don't remember what happened next.